Ya Rasulallah Ya Habiballah Ya Rasulallah Lecture number two. Okay, so we know these children are a trust. They don't belong to us. And we're going to answer for them on the Day of Judgment before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they turned out to be awlad salihin, then you're going to have double reward. You're not going to have double reward. You're going to have the reward of all of your progeny to Yawmul Qiyamah that does amal salih. That's a wonderful thing. But if these children, and you won't be responsible for the ones who come after that go astray because you did your job. No. And if they are not salih, and you, a big reason for that is your tarbiyah, then you have to you have to face the burden of that, the big ongoing burden of that until Allah Alam man is raised up again. Okay, lecture number two. It's uh, number two in our sequence. <coughs> the discussion of this lecture revolves around the natural fitri inclination of love that a parent feels for a child. It is fitra that a person likes to have children in his life, the sentiment of kindness a person feels towards children in general, and his own children in particular, also stems from the fitra. So we say that someone who doesn't like children, you know, someone who doesn't feel any kindness or warmth or, or empathy towards children, has a warped fitra. It's not natural. It's a, this a loving and kind feeling towards children is part of the fitra that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in us. The beauty of the child draws the parent, as does its dependent weakness, which stirs the emotions of mercy and kindness. The parent also sees in the child an extension of his own self, and therefore his own identity and being after his death. SubhanAllah. Uh, and I have an ayah here from Sheikh Hassan. I think it's Al-Malu wal Bunun, Zinat al Hayat al Dunya. Wealth and children are the zina, the ornament of the life of this world. So they're the most, uh, the, the two things that are nafus are most attached to in having and holding is man and the uh, wealth and children. There is no fault in feeling this natural inclination towards one's children or the desire to have them. It is also of completeness of a man's masculinity that he is able to balance his qualities of strength with the ability to show love and mercy. Because this natural inclination towards one's children is so strong, there is no directive in the Quran for parents to care for their children. While there are many directives for children to care for their parents, the conscience may need prompting for the effort needed to see to the needs of the elderly and infirm. If you have a very old person and you have to wash them after they go to the bathroom, the nafs does not have an inclination for that. But you won't mind changing the nappies of your baby. So this is the difference. We have an ayah here which has not been written out, but I think it is Ayyuhaladina Aminuku Amfisakum wa Ahlikum Nara. No. This ayah that we quoted in the last lesson, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran doesn't direct people to care for their children because it is such a strong inclination and emotion in people's hearts to care for their children. However, what does Allah Most High order people to do with their families in the Quran to protect them from the hellfire? And what else does He uh, order them to do to pray and to have patience in the performance of the prayer? So Allah directs people to bring about those things in this world that will save them in the Akhirah which require effort and work. And they're things that are usually are not liked by the children who are being taught to do them. So what it is, thus he directs parents to teach their children manners and to raise them well to protect them and save them from the hellfire. 
The reason for this is that the love and affection one feels for one's children is such that one might not be able to enforce the discipline the child needs to be raised well or to deny him what he wants when giving to him is going to be detrimental to him. So this is a really key thing for us to understand. If you really love someone, you have to look at the long-term effects of your love and make sure that that, the long-term effects of your love are not actually going to harm the one that you love. So this is what Allah SWT has directed people to in regards to their children, not to care and love for them because that's already there, but rather to save them from the hellfire, rather to teach them and make them become accustomed to the actions that they need to perform and to develop the character that they need to succeed in this life. So it's a very important point, and it's and that's the whole point of these lessons. This is why I want to have this lesson. I don't see, for the most part, it's very rare, the people who come here at least, that they neglect their children. So if someone is neglecting their children, we'll tell them, don't neglect your children, they have a right of you. But the problem that we see is the overlove of the children. So the children don't learn the habits and character that they need to succeed in life. And I'm going to give you some examples of this once we finish our summary. Okay. فالسبب لهذه المحاضرات محمد هنا أن ألاحظ أن بشكل عام عندنا ليس المشكلة إحمال الأولاد بل المشكلة الدلالة الأولاد تعلق بهم حتى الأولاد يكون فاقدين ال ال شو اسمه الدسبلين ما اسمه الدسبلين الدسبلين التربية بس ليس ليس مقصود التربية أن يكون عندهم قوة لي يقدروا على أنفسهم هذا لأن what is what this what does discipline mean what does discipline mean it means that a person has the ability to make himself do things that he doesn't like so someone who has always received what they want it's not only it's not just about material things but it's about getting their own way all the time or not being reprimanded when they should be, they will not learn how to have control over themselves. They won't have control over themselves. So they won't have control over the akhlaq and they won't have control over themselves to perform acts of worship. And they won't have control over themselves to endure the effort and work that is required to serve this ummah. They will not be able to make sacrifices for other people. So this is the reason why discipline is very important with children. Doesn't, I'm not talking about hitting kids. I'm talking about giving them limits so they don't cross over into things that are not going to be good for them when they grow up. Let's read. Love is one thing, while tarbiya is another. A hub shay with tarbiya shay akhir. No. Love is the emotion of showing goodness to the beloved. And al hub al ihsan al mahboom. However, if love becomes a reason for harm to the beloved, then it brings about the opposite result of what was intended. A child who is always given what he wants out of love doesn't have good tarbiya and doesn't develop self control. He doesn't learn patience or how to make an effort for himself. You know, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he sent these lectures of Sheikh Hassan because Sheikh Hassan is an alim. He's an alim. So I'm asking you, please, if you don't believe me, believe him. He's an alim and he has two families. He has two wives and I don't know how many kids. 
And I know that his children uh, have a very good tarbiya. I've seen them myself. So, this is an alim, and he's a God-fearing person who puts his ilm into practice. So, Um Khair told me, he's blind. Uh, um Khair told me when she first went to see Sheikh Hassan, he asked, because he, he didn't, couldn't see her, so he obviously asked his wives how she dressed. So why is he asking how she dressed? Because he wants to see how she implements her deen. And he asked, does she wear gloves? And they said, no. So he asked them, hey, why don't you wear gloves? <laughs> anyway, she, whatever she said then, it's not a wajib in the Hanafi Medha. But this is the kind of implementation that he has in his deen. That there's, it is, the, it's about having taqwa laws of the so this is what we want to return to. Everything that we want to talk about in this dars and in the future and in the past, it goes back to two things. Taqwa Allah and Hasn al Having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and good character. That is the core of it all. And that Taqwa Allah and Hasn al does not come about except through some disciplined tarbiyah. Children don't learn limits that some things are inappropriate unless they are told this is inappropriate, don't do it. That's how they learn it. From a very young age, they hear it over and over again. It's not that at seven years old suddenly they start hearing messages. Where were you for seven years? They didn't understand anything for seven years? A little kid who's four years old, he doesn't understand what it means to give someone something? So they hear it from the time that they're conscious that something is appropriate and something is not appropriate. They don't have to be yelled at, they have to be told. When they get old enough that to do something they've been told is very inappropriate and they know that it's inappropriate, they should be disciplined. So there's a way to go about it. But the point is that the child, it's a process. If they open their eyes and they hear about Allah, and they open their eyes and they hear about Rasulullah, and he said to Sanam. And so they know from the time that they are a child, the point of their life is Allah. And the way to Allah is by following Rasulullah, he said to Sanam. So they learn that from the time that they are able to hear and see and understand from a very young age. And it becomes, it's repeated over and over and over and over again, the things that are appropriate and the things that are... <laughs>